on the table. Are you ready to be crystallized with Lego Ninjago? Hey everyone, this is Squirrel Stampede and I am Dan and thank you much for watching today as we have a very large assortment of Lego Ninjago crystallized sets to construct. Are we gonna build all of these in one video? I don't know, I hope we can get to them. This is an amazing launch of sets. We've got the Crystal King, we've got Samurai X is back, the Golden Ultra Dragon, a temple, a jet, so much to construct, but so many interesting sets. I couldn't just pick one, I figured let's just go all in and crystallize our fingers as we crush them in all those pieces of build. It's going to be spectacular. Let's get on to this amazing new series, 2022 Lego Ninjago, The Crystallized Season. Squirrel, Squirrel Stampede. Stampede! Let's begin today with the only set build that I have shortly seen on screen, Lego Ninjago Season 4, Episode 9, Hound Dog McBrag. Set number 71775, Nia's Samurai X Mech has returned 1,003 pieces. This set is packed with minifigures, Master Wu, Samurai X Nia, Golden J of course, Oni Garmadon, Lil Nelson, The Mechanic, Vengestone Warrior, General Pythor, packed with minifigures. And this may be the most ferocious Samurai X Mech to this day. Inside the box instruction booklet, in a box, bag one, bag two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plus weapons, eight bags, that's larger than I thought. We'll get Squirrel Girl Stampede on this stat, What? gotta have all the help I can get. By the way, there are instructions in here, right? There they are, instructions! Well, let's get this built. And constructed and standing very tall and sturdy, the all new Samurai X mech with Nia piloting inside. An absolutely impressive mech build on this one. Fully articulated with fully weaponized Lego bricks. Ooh. And standing over quite the field of battle of minifigures, crystallized versus good. What is going on here? There is so much to talk about. This is really odd though, reviewing a set that I really didn't construct, but it is so beautiful. I need to reconstruct and construct. Obviously the highlight feature of this build is Samurai X Mech. It is so cool. Even Gold Mecha Squirrel is attracted to it. Let's see if we can get in a little closer. Okay, maybe not that close, but you can see Nia inside piloting the mech. And it's pretty tall, running approximately 13 inches tall, or maybe 14 if you get this unicorn thing up pointing straight. And again, highly balanced. I'm amazed how well this stands. I have very little issue with tipping yet. Nice solid footprint there, solid body mass all around so that I feel like it is very well structurally constructed and then full of articulated joints. So we have the headpiece up on a small little ball joint and you can move about. And to get Nia out, you can lift up this top panel. That's her escape. Oh no! There is some hinging and joint work into the Samurai X part of the chest, but you're gonna wanna have that attached down strong. We've got nice double jointed shoulders here for great positioning, nice and sturdy. We've got a single ball hinged joint in the elbow and a ball joint on the wrist with an articulated and impressive gripping hand system with three fingers and a thumb. She's holding onto a sword on each arm. Swords, of course, removable. Then on over to her waist, we have several little hanging robe pieces. What would you call those? There's four of those going off to the sides. You can position as she is moving and standing. More solid hip jointing here. We can bend out and lunge in a variety of different ways. I do not believe they kick outward, though. Then the knee system. These knees are incredibly cool, lifting down one of these panels. They're almost triple ball jointed, I believe. There's three ball joints up on top, gripping down below, giving them superior strength in battle, plus a little bit of a kneecap protection zone. You're not gonna knock down Samurai X at all. And as for ankles, I just detect one ball joint in there, but it's highly supported by some extra brick around it. Plus again, a nice solid flat 
footprint to this thing. Sometimes that is the demise of a giant mech is not enough of a flat footprint or a footprint to steady such a giant mech creation. This one's holding nice and tight. Plus a variety of sticker work here and there throughout the mech really gives it some color and some personality. It is such a joy to look at. And don't forget about these shoulder missile launchers. A couple pin needle launchers up on each one. And these are highly positionable too. You can place these in a variety of different positions giving your mech all sorts of flavor. Let's see if we can get a peek of Nia inside the cockpit here, lifting up the top panel. There she is. She's highly protective inside this mech, that's for sure. She's surrounded by several panels of electronics to control Samurai X and looks quite comfortable inside. Maybe even some room in there for some weapons. And we can remove and retrieve Nia out of the cockpit and check out the abundant supply of minifigures here. This set build may just contain the best assortment of LEGO Ninjago minifigures out of this series, as it's a great variety of a little bit of everything. Obviously, Nia is the star of this set. She has returned to Pilot Samurai X now that her water features have been slightly flushed out. There she is. Oops. Sorry, Jay. Looking good, a little more blue designed with this Samurai X versus red from the past, using some of her water features still there. Removable helmet, no hairpiece with her. It would have been nice to have a hairpiece included. Then of course we've got Jay over here. Golden Jay, and we will see Golden Jay a little bit more as we continue through the builds today. Now as we continue on through these minifigures, maybe spoilers will start to appear as we have not seen the second half of season 4 yet. Or would it be season 5? No, I think it's season 4. Or is that season 24? I don't know. We've got General Pythor looking terrific, holding on to one of the golden weapons that has been augmented a little bit with crystallized technology. Something we really don't know much about yet as it is still such a mystery but it's so cool to have a Pythor. And equally as cool to see a crystallized mechanic next to him, two main villains of the Council of the Crystallized King included with this set. That's a pretty good deal and both of these are my favorites. And then off to the side here, like many of these sets, we have Avenge Stone Warrior. You will see those several times. They're pretty fun. It's got a little bit of a transparency in one of his left feet there. And these masks are pretty interesting. We were laughing, maybe Llama, maybe Dragon, we weren't sure. And then over on this side, we have a Master Wu with Golden Armored Beard technology. Golden Beard technology. I must know what this does. Golden Beard. Plus we have an Oni Garmadon, what's that all about? Don't want to talk too much on that. And a little Nelson. Nelson is finally kind of picking up steam in the series, slowly being shown throughout the show. What's going on with that guy? And of course, also included with this very lively set build is a crystallized dragon minion sorts of thing. I'm guessing it's a crystallized little minion. It's a fun little extra feature build to have your Samurai X fight it about. Not much of a tail on this guy. Maybe it's the thing that they kind of follow to the council. I don't know, it's kind of too big. Lots of points of articulation though. We've got a head that is on a ball joint with opening and closing mouth, maybe. Now the mouth is kind of uh, shut permanently around this uh, structure there. But we do have shoulder jointed ball joints and we've got non-elbows, but these things move. These little crystallized wings move about with a couple fingers on each side. And over on the back, we've got little ball jointed hips and a little bit ball jointed toes there on the feet. So a cute little minion to smash with your Samurai X. I'll get him. <laughs> uh. So again, this build pretty much the only thing we have seen so far from the crystallized season. Most everything has not really been revealed yet. So if you're looking for something that is on screen and established, look for Nia's Samurai X mech. It's got a little bit of everything, and it's pretty fun adventurous. Now we can move on to some new set builds that we know very little about, and we have to just know more about. Who is this Crystal King dude? Set number 71771, The Crystal King Temple, may give us a few ideas. 703 pieces. With the main group of four ninjas, Zane, Kai, J, Cole, then versus The Crystal King and Avenge Stone Guard. And on the back of the box, the Battle of the Crystallize Ages. How many times am I going to use crystallize as a description term today? Inside the box, pretty good scale book of instructions and some decaling stickers. Bag one, bag two, bag three, bag four, five, and bag six. 
plus a few, of course, golden weapons. Now there's no way I can construct this many sets in one video, no way! So I'm handing off the Crystal King Temple to Lazy Kitty 10 k our Squirrel Stampede Gamer Girl. She's gonna construct this up for me as I work on other sets. So hopefully we can crystallize some things here. And constructed the Crystal King Temple. Thank you, Lazy Kitty 10 k for the help. What an impressive, somewhat masters of Shintaro style layout. Maybe the Skull Sorcerer helped out with the architecture. Crystal Temple kind of features a giant tower with the Crystal King up on top and a side stairway scapes with a baby crystal dragon thing on it. So I'm guessing with this temple we have the four main ninja included non-golden yet, and the crystal king at this point seems to have captured the golden weapons. As we have the Sith of Quakes up top underneath the Crystal King, we've got the Golden Shuriken down here, we've got the Sword of Flame, and we've got the Nunchucks of Gold over here, each protected by possibly a crystallized trap. Are they re-energized with power? I don't know yet, but Zane's over here too, captured in a little crystal shell. The stairway feature over here is pretty interesting with the front side with the shurikens right on this little post. Then we've got a stairway up to this crazy character, a veg stone guard guarding Jay's weapon up top. Jay's trying to reach up top, but we have an action feature over here, just press and move down, and these stairs break apart and move to the side. Kind of a fun little build there, as they swing back and forth. Hey, would you stop swinging that? I'm trying to get my weapon back! Uh, -uh. Sorry, Jay. Then we've got this cute little dragon, this cute little baby crystallized dragon. I don't know, we were kind of speculating Overlord, maybe a little bit, possibly uh, being rearranged into this series. What do you think? And it sits down on this nice little pedestal right here, which is kind of rotatey shaky. And Kai's over here trying to get his golden weapon, but it kind of likes to rotate around a little bit and wobble. Not exactly sure of the action features here. They're not all together. I know you can press down this thing here, and kind of give him a fall, but it's a little bit acting over on the dragon instead. But this piece adds to your crystal temple grounds, and you can place it in a variety of different positions around your central main tower, which is starting to fall apart. And there up top is the Crystal King's throne. Finally a view of the Crystal King, a four-armed kind of character. Close your eyes, I'm going to unmask if you do not want to be spoiled what he looks like under this crazy Oni mask. Hey! Garmadon? Overlord? What do you think? Or it could just be Lil Nelson the whole time, right? Let's just put this back on here. Yeah! Kind of the funnest thing about this crystal temple is this hanging crystal cell. We've got poor Zane locked up inside hanging hanging precariously, almost floating the way it's constructed, and balanced with the chain pieces holding and extending it out. To retrieve Zane, just simply kind of open up the doors. Oh, there he goes. So a nice little feature there. A closer quick look at the minifigures of this build. I can't believe we see Cole today. Cole is actually included. This is the new season four uniforms of the set. I kind of like these better than the golden uniforms, just your common ninja suits. They're looking pretty good, nicely detailed throughout, each with a silver sword. And of course, throughout the Crystal Temple, there are their golden weapons to use too. And then of course up here, we had just checked out the taller Crystal King. Hey! that bench stone guard again, and the little mini dragon. So some great little pieces included with this build. Oh no, where are you taking me? It will be interesting to see how large this crystal temple will really turn out to be in season 45, episode 37. Another build that says this series is all about the crystals. Set number 71772, the Crystal King. 722 pieces. There's Laloid. Harumi's here, Vench Stone Guard number one, Vench Stone Warrior number one, and Crystal King. This crystalline entity just looks gnarly, with a centaur flying dragon-like jointed dingage. Inside the box, portrait size, instruction booklet of him. Inside the box, a magazine of instructions, a sheet of small decals. Bag one, two, three, four, five. Six, and a seven. Seven bags. 
And with so much to build and so little time, I'm going to pass this on over to Ben Ultra 21. Squirrel Stampede Gamer Ben Ultra 21 will help build and keep us on track. So the Crystal King totally means business. Look at this mech, this monster, what is it? The Crystal King is centralized inside the chest piece, so it could be a mech, but it's more like a giant centaur dragon, right? Oh my goodness, this guy is cool looking. From all around every angle, I'm seeing something more dangerous than I saw before. Is this guy going to break my table? Please be nice, please be nice. I'm guessing this is going to be kind of a final battle type of set, right? Something we won't see until the very end of Season 4, D5, or whatever season this is. What an impressive monster build piece. Like Samurai X and many of the other builds, highly articulated. We've got shoulder joints up on rotational points that hold pretty well. We can move these shoulder pads too to help out in movement. We've got ball joints on the elbows. We've got fingers on the gripping hands. Look at these. Oh my goodness, they're kind of scary. Look how spiky this hand is. These claws are just terrific. Three fingers on the side plus a thumb and the ability to grip onto a weapon. We've got clips underneath and over here holding onto his giant staff of crystal something, some sort of shard that's going to really give some impalement pain. Then a little closer, you can see him inside the Crystal King. We can open up these side wings here, these rib cage pieces. That's a beautiful sound. Then opening this up, we can see the Crystal King inside a non-four-armed Crystal King, just a two-armed Crystal King, so he can fit inside there. That will be interesting to figure out. Let's close him up for now. Very nicely protected inside. Then on to centaur jointing. How are we up at centaur jointing in our intelligence today? We have non-moving hips up front. Those are probably going to have to stay sturdy to keep him standing upright. And the same thing with the front backwards knees. Those are those angle pieces there. There is no movement there. Trying to keep him standing is probably their goal. But we do have some rotational ball joints up on the feet to get him into some interesting angle poses. Most of the articulation is over in the back here. We've got the hips here on ball joints that extend out and rotate, and then we have ball joints on the feet, and it almost feels like there's jointage in this in this center central centaur part. Can you say that three times fast? Central centaur center part. Maybe if I just loop it. In this center central centaur part, in the center central centaur part, in the center central centaur part, in the center central centaur part. And then over to the tail, we've got several points of uh, hinge there and then ball joints to really move this tail around. This tail has probably the most articulated bits of this beast. The wings on the back are hinged out so we can fold them out and fold them back in. Nice wingy ding there. What is the height of this character? We're running approximately 10 inches to the top of his head, although taller, 11 inches if you count the spiky crown, and maybe even 12 to 13 inches high if you raise that staff of crystal high. So what a beast of the Crystal King. I'm afraid of him. I'm going to have to leave this one locked down in the basement. As for minifigures, five minifigures included with this build. It is a Laloid set. There's a Laloid in non-golden armor. Again, I usually just prefer when they're not amped up on gold. Harumi is also here. Harumi in league with the Crystal King, we will find out. Good to see her all crystallized, suited up. And then we have a Venge Stone Guard over here, and a Venge Stone Warrior over there. You're going to amass a lot of Venge Stone Warriors with this series if you pick up many of the sets. And again, ripping out from the rib cage, we have the Crystal King non-forearmed. And again, close your eyes, let's get a good look at his face. Removing the Oni mask, who do we got there? Ah! That's interesting. Oof. These guys are creepy, I'm out of here. Good thinking Lloyd, just get away. I will hit set number 71774, Lloyd's Golden Ultra Dragon. I love building the Ultra Dragons with the four heads. And this one's in gold. The minifigures include the four main ninja in gold. And take a look at this golden Oni Laloid. A few Venge stone brutes, a warrior, and the Crystal King again with the Crystal King. Inside the box, the golden Ultra Dragon. We'll compare it with the previous Ultra Dragon and see how these two look together. Inside the box, a super wide booklet of instructions. Back one. 
Bag two, bag three, bag four, bag five, bag six, bag seven, and some golden weapons. I can't believe how much there is to do today. Let's begin the construction of the Dragon Ultra of Golden Maloids. And there we have constructed Lloyd's Golden Ultra Dragon. So, so golden and shiny. Well, maybe not that shiny. Actually, the gold brick is a little more brown in a way, or a light tan. I wish they could include some sparkle or something to it, but I guess, you know, that might compromise the brick. So I finally got a turn to build today, and it was an enjoyable build, although I really am quite jealous of Squirrel Girl Stampede constructing Nia Samurai X Mech. That looked really fun to build. All of these sets are pretty enjoyable. I was super interested in the construction of this one, again, as we had recently built a Legacy Golden Dragon. Legacy Ultra Dragon, I mean. So I wanted to see the details, how this one worked out, and it was pretty interesting build. Some of the features are these really interesting geared wings. I'm not exactly sure if I got it right, but if you rotate these Master Wu hats, you can get the wings to open and fold up, and it looks really quite cool. A design and a gearing system I've never really seen before, especially with those arc gears. I need to do a really complicated Technic set sometime. So these were fun and really give some reach. I kind of like the non-fabric or plastic wings too. For some reason they really are fun to work with. The other feature is the four heads of this magnificent Ultra Dragon. There's fire up on top. This must be rock over here. Lightning over on the yellow side. And ice. They were probably the most challenging of the build as I kept accidentally grabbing the wrong piece. Make sure while you're building to make sure which side it's looking at, if it's got teeth or if it's just a flatter jaw or if it's a printed piece. 
they're a little bit challenging, but once built, looking good. They're also implementing that double jointed mouthpiece, which I'm not the biggest fan of. They're a little tricky to work with, especially when placing the ball joint. They kind of want to pop out when you're trying to build them. It gives you a nice open mouth attack. I do like that about it. But on the other hand, sometimes it looks kind of funny from certain angles. You can totally see the hinge work. They stand out a little more, so they're not the most detailed of dragon heads because of that joint system. But I think when you're looking at all four heads moving around like so, you don't even really notice it, so maybe that's not such a big deal. The central core of the dragon is looking nice and thick too. It's hard to see, but a lot of these new dragons really give a nice central torso section. I like that part of the build. And over onto the back side, if we can rotate, You've got a lot of hinginess back there. I think this central gives you a little bit of hinge and a little more hinge on this tail piece right here with the nice extending sword piece at the very end. So a really nice looking striking ultra dragon with tons of points of articulation. We've got a double jointed posted articulated shoulder. We've got a double elbow that is not articulated but we've got ball jointed feet with plenty of articulated claws if you get those in the right direction. Articulation on the hips in the back and on the back lower ankles. It likes to kind of bend down a lot. These front feet are having trouble supporting its full heavy body weight, but you know, you can place it back up. Overall, it's a great golden ultra dragon build, especially with these fun wing pieces. I've enjoyed those in the construction. As for the minifigures, a full set of golden ninja here. There's Cole. I can't believe we've seen Cole twice now in one video. What is the deal with that? Really quick, if you want to see a comparison between the golden Cole and regular Cole, there you go. That's kind of the style change. Let's try J too. Here's J, golden J, and a regular J. So a few highlighted golden elements like their shoulder pads and a few various details on their chest piece and leggings. And of course their head masks. There's Kai too, and Zane. So you get the four ninja in gold. It's a total golden celebration pack. And then we've got this. What is going on here? Golden Oni Lloyd. That is monstrous. What kind of face do you have under that mask? Ooh, he's grumpy. And down goes Zane. He's having emotion chip problems. But that is certainly a cool piece to highlight this build of a awesome ultra dragon. And of course, to fight the ninja, we have more Venge Stone Brutes over here. And I think, oh, that's the Venge Stone Warrior. And then here's a Venge Stone Brute. And here's another Venge Stone Brute. They're having trouble standing. And if you need another Crystal King, this build has a nice little Crystal King on his throne with the stolen golden weapons. So there will be a lot to unpack in the second part of Season 4. And again, I want to compare this with the Legacy Golden Dragon. We do have one spot for Laloid to sit up on a riding saddle up top. I don't see a spot really for the other ninja. Usually they sit up by the heads, but I do not see really good locking places for them. So there's Lloyd. Let's get our other Ultra Dragon out. And there it is, missing a few of the ninja. They must be on a secret separate mission. So here is a quick look at the two Ultra Dragons, a Legacy and the new Golden. I really like the buildable headpieces on the Legacy. These all constructed pieces, tiny, tiny parts, really turned out great and epic. Whereas these headpieces were a little bit larger. Wait, is that Cole again? A third time today? How is that even possible? So when it comes to the two Ultra Dragons, the headpieces on this one are superior, but the way they kind of reach out as four is a little bit awkward. The way they've got the new one with the head stacked above and below is kind of nice. So a little bit better reach and range with the articulation of this one, whereas these four heads are lined up and are on points of leverage, but harder to move. But there are spots for everyone, which is kind of nice. I wonder what happened to Laloid there. And of course, this one had the attacking wing feature. How did this one work again? I'm trying to remember. It's been, it's been sitting up a little bit on display, getting some dust. Ah, there we go, levering back. So yeah, this lever moves it back and forth in sort of an attack stance type of thing with big plastic giant wings. I like the new wings of the Golden Dragon here. These are just more fun to work with. They feel more Lego when you're building pieces of everything versus fabric and plastic wings. This dragon does feel a little bit longer though with its back tail feature section. That is a really great looking piece. Cool to see these two together. I'm glad they made a golden one. It was a really fun one to build today. And there we go with four 
four massive Lego Ninjago crystallized set builds. That was total fun, total impressive with all four sets. They were all just a joy to build and watch building as I had lots of helpers on this one. We didn't get to Zane's Golden Dragon Jet though, whoops. Well, there's a few other vehicles. Maybe in about six to eight weeks we will discover those. Oh, what? We missed Golden Dragon Cole? Cole could have appeared four times in one Lego Ninjago build? Whoops! Well, we'll hopefully try to get to that in a little bit, though. We've got so much dropping here in August. It's been a lot of fun building everything that we can get our hands on, too. If you liked today's video, please give us a squike, a squirrelive, and a squamant. Let us know your favorite LEGO Ninjago crystallized build of today. Thank you so much for watching. That's what I have to say about that.